Amen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Life After Grief, grief and Loss. Excuse me. Welcome to Life After Grief and Loss Ministry. We welcome you back on this evening. And we, my, myself and Sister Rosa and Sister Farida, um, coming on tonight to share once again and hoping that as we continue to be open and transparent as much as possible, that is, it is helping someone to, um, to process through the new change of life, whether it be a loss of a loved one, a child, a job, or your home, or whatever different challenges that we all face in life and sometimes um, experiencing um, death or loss can be surprising and it could cause us to be disorientated um, because we have became so norm, norm or so used to our life being normal, what we think is normal and then something happened unexpectedly. And sometimes it is hard to really process it. And sometimes it's difficult. Um, some questions that we may, um, even though it's not have um, anything to do with our input, sometimes we find ourselves asking questions about who, I am, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, how I'm going to make it through this? Or um, sometimes you'd be so disorientated that you can't even really think through the um, process. And I, from, from my experience, one of the things, that was one of my challenges. Um, what's next? Um, I was so used of being a wife, a mother. Um, it was it changed my whole life, and I find myself questioning. Okay, I'm not a wife anymore, so who am I? But my life was more than just a wife. But those thoughts had came um, to me. And, and it could really be a struggle. And sometimes even if someone lost a job and you have adapted to whatever the position that you held at that job, and when you lose that job, you find yourself, what's next? Who am I? What is my purpose? Um, it just seemed like it throws us out of whack, but that's never have been God intention for us to be to the place of um, not knowing where to go. And sometimes we have to, um, as believers, and, and even if you're not a believer, you have to find uh, a positive place in the midst of the, of, of the storm, the challenge. Um, and so tonight, we, each one of us going to um, share you know, some pointers and how to um, find, rediscover yourself or find your um, true identity. And usually I always say that our real true identity comes through Christ. Um, sometimes we, we just have to learn to sit in a quiet place and just find just talk to God and find out where do I go from here. 
and not so much focus on um, what happened because you can lose your identity trying, you know, staying focused on the, the issue and not trying to find who or what your purpose is in the midst of it. So I'm a, I don't want to do all of the talking and I'm going to let one of them come in and start and then we're going to move forward with the um, topic for tonight. Anybody want to um, open up? And well, just... I guess I can um, go I guess I can go ahead and start because, you know, I guess the initial um, topic that we had, that we had discussed was, you know, understanding who we are um, <clears throat> during the grief. And, and I want to just say that that is a process. That is a, a, a journey. Like, um, I'm almost 10 years um, past the loss of my son, and no one says, you know, I'm okay with that. You know, I, I, you know, my faith is strong. I, I, you know, I'm okay with that. But 10 years later, I might be able to say, why not me? You know, there was, there's something in it for me, uh, you know, to be able to learn. Um, and so I think one of the things that I found um, interesting in um, doing some of the research is that it does either put you in a, fear zone or in a faith zone. Um, and really we connected it to first Corinthians and it is about, um, you know, running to obtain the prize, which is staying in righteousness. Um, you know, are we going to let this loss, if it's a job, you know, if it's uh, you know, a house or if it's whatever, are we going to be in fear and believe that, God is not who he says he is, that he cannot sustain us. And like Minister Simmons had mentioned before, when she nor her husband were working, you know, they were still all sufficiency. So it's a matter of, I think our attitude, um, how we're going to view a thing is sometimes how we uh, know always how it is going to play out because what we're thinking about it, so it's about getting our mind under control, getting our emotions under control. Yeah. And, you know, even if we start in fear, knowing that we need to work our faith, to work where our faith is working and just understanding that we are going to get through this, where, you know, we have the skill set it takes so we just need to really tap into what's already in us to win whatever it is we're facing, whatever loss that might be. Amen. Amen. Oh, I was thinking that I, I <clears throat> like to see the girls in school sometimes because we ask them their name, they're so slow in saying their name. And, um, and I tell them, see how fast that boy said his name? He know who he is. And we as women, this is a little bit off the grief area, but we as women sometimes, because we change our name so often, we lose our identity. And basically the same thing happened with, um, with the grief, going through the grief process. And not just grief, but any type of loss, we could mm -hmm. lose our identity through relational re relations, mm -hmm. through our profession, through our finances, spiritual, and even physical sometimes. So all these things are different. So identity is really a funny thing. It's really the way we think of ourselves, how we define ourselves, and just who we are to ourselves. Yes. I heard Sonia said she had, she tried to start thinking, who am I anymore? Am I, I was a wife, but what am I now? In a sense, you're still a wife, just a wife that now is a widow. But the identity didn't change. And you just have to realize, just accept the fact that it is different now because that person is no longer with us. Same thing with profession. I'm still a full charge bookkeeper. I may not work, 
but that's still who I am because that's what all my knowledge is, all what my degrees are, as well as being a counselor. But I started out as a full charge bookkeeper in finance. So it's basically the, the way we see ourselves, where we view ourselves, when we <clears> actually <throat> lose that identity. Because no matter how many children you lose, or how many husbands you lose, you're still a wife. In fact, I think the word that we need to be a wife before we can even be married. So we became a wife before we even said I do, because God was preparing us to be just that person. And we can't we can't lose sight of that also. Everything that we have been or are, we prepared to be that by God. He prepared us to be mothers, and we're still mothers. Maybe not to our own, but to others. You know, I can't say you still wife now. You wife to that person that's not going to go with you, but not to anyone else at this point in time in your life. Eventually, you may become another wife, but not right now. You, you still that wife of the person you have laws. And I'm, 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 I'm sort of smiling about that because I don't want everybody to get, get the feeling that I'm still a wife, so I can go out there and be with anybody. But no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm still saying the state of mind to the person you lost, you still a wife to that person. You may become another wife in the future, but right now we we do we doing that part of a widow, a uh, divorcee per divorce person. So 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 often if, if we can look at the fact that who we are does not completely define us, as Sandra saw the touchstone somewhat. We still God's children. We still his daughters, his son. We still belong to him. And we have to realize that the loss we had does not take away our identity from who God brought us here for. We, we just lost that person like on more of an emotional area of our life or that job in the emotional area of our life. But we are still what God created us to be. We're still that person. And I think that we can keep in mind of that identity. We won't stray away too far from whom we are in the Lord. And I think that's the most important, important thing. We got to remember who we are in him. Not so much who we were in a relationship or who we were on the job, but who we are to our Lord and Savior who has created us to be an awesome person. He made no mistakes in the creation. We are awesome. We are unique. And my, like my little friend, Corrine there with her nice smile and her nice hairdo. She are, she's special. And I always see her in a different light every time I see her because something comes out of her in a different way. So her identity to me keeps changing because I keep seeing something new that I had not seen before. So it's really sort of hard to identify who you are because we're always changing. Something new comes about that makes us a different light, a different person in different ways. And I, re I respect that in each of you because each time I, I come in your contact, something new comes out that I didn't know before. So what I thought as your identity before, no, nah, that's not them at all. They this. So I, I see identity is constantly changing to a greater force or a greater arena in life. So. So we have to keep seeing us that way, you know, not just because this we have laws, we no longer what we thought we were, you something even greater because those revolution and evolution that keep taking place in your life cause you to be something even greater than you were before. I'm going to stop. I like to add to that. A lot of time, um, we really don't focus on who... Uh, who we are until something drastic happen. And then yeah. that's when you usually try to struggle to find your, your um, identity. We don't be aware of it. But as I stated earlier, that never has been God um, um, design because we always created with a purpose, with our own personal identity, our own personal anointing. But a lot of time, um, and it's all how a person view um, mm. the situation when they go in, because a lot of times people, you have some people that find 
or discover their true identity once tragic hit. And a lot of time they go on and create a foundation or something in the memories of if it's a loved one or sometime when they are um, have that discovery, they take time out to hear, because you got to listen and take time out and, and seek God to find out which direction to go. And a lot of time people, uh, when they take that time out after a, a loss of a job, a lot of people have went on and created their own um, business, but that was someone that is your view. Because if you, if you let a position um, define you, then you would not find your purpose if you let that position. If you think all you, you are is a supervisor or a teacher, if, that's, if you use those kind of titles to identify who you are, then you pretty much in a bad, you really going to be in a bad place mm -hmm. because it's not about a title and each person that God, if you go through even the scripture, each person that God used, it never was about, um, the, the title. It was about the position, their purpose in life that mm -hmm. set them in position to prosper and to become um, who they, you know, who they all challenged and became great, you know, in, in the um, great in their position. I say it that way. Like that. But a lot of time when, when we lose things, we often, and I'm saying we, because that's the human side of us, we view and focus on the tangible things. We don't focus on where God is trying to lead us or, or what is the real purpose behind it. Even though, you know, the hurt, you may be hurting and, and pain and God never, he said he uh, healed the broken heart. He amend the broken heart. So he never intend for no one to stay in the place of hurt or damage or not being able to progress. But his intention is seek me and, and seek his way and he will lead us. So I believe each time when he said, acknowledge me in all your ways, he would direct our path. If we can get that part, path, if we can get past what physically happened to us and allow him to direct us, it, it would get us to the place that God intend for us to be. And I can, and I'm going to shut up after this, but as each one of us is on here tonight, each one of us experienced a different type of loss. Each one of us, grief affected us each each one of us in a different way but one thing we did have in common the hurt and the pain we experienced hurt we experienced pain and another thing what we experiencing even now when we couldn't see ourselves at one point through our pain and what we was you know what we have been going through we probably wouldn't be sitting here today reaching and and you know and helping others because i don't think none of us would have said you know put our hands up and say well i'm willing to go through this to be able to help someone but the greatness of it all that each one of us had our own different experience but god turned it around and used it and i love the saying when they said when, when they give you lemons, you, you have a choice. You can eat that sour lemon or you can turn that lemon into lemonade. And of course, you're going to put some sugar in it and sweeten it up. And, and with us, we all process differently. But the greatness of it all, that God brought us together to be able to help others. So 
I'm gonna let someone else talk. Amen. And nobody. Okay, so I'm gonna just. One of the things that I, you know, looked up in the research was, you know, we're talking about grief and loss, and then, you know, in the end, there is hope. So, you know, somebody, of course, might say, well, okay, well, I'm, I'm grieving this job loss, this car loss, this, you know, spouse loss, this child loss, and you're telling me that I can hope. And, you know, what I think is important for me to let people know is that grief and hope can exist together, but it's our hope in Christ that's going to help us move forward through the grief process. And so, you know, to know that God is going to um, comfort us, that he's going to send his word, you know, he's going to send his spirit um, to be our comforter and to be our guide, you know, is, is the reassurance. So, um, you know, the only way that you don't grieve is if you decide you're going to live in this world alone, that you're not going to take the risk to love. You're not going to take the risk to, you know, be, um, engaged in life. And that was definitely not God's plan for us. Um, so grief is a part of this loss, grief, trials, tribulations are a part of what God's plan and purpose is for each of us. Um, and then with free will, he's given us the ability to decide again, how we're going to process these losses, how we're going to move through, or if we're going to be in a rut, or if we're going to let what other people say about us define who we are if we're only going to be a daughter and we're never going to be anybody's friend or if we're only going to be this and we're never going to be that. So I think, you know, in um, looking to the, you know, the prize, which is for us to uh, function in righteousness is um, certainly a, a momentum to help us work through any grief or loss um, that we you know, are, are facing now and will face in the future because as long as we live, there's likely to be some type of um, adversity that comes um, toward us. So, As I was um, listening to you, Marita, um, I was looking up the scripture. What Marita is saying is scriptural. Um, and I'm reading from the Amplified. It's John 16 and 33. It was saying, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace. And basically what everybody on the line has been talking about that our peace is in God. And the part that Verita also was talking about in this world, you're gonna have tribulation. You're gonna have distress. You're gonna have suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be filled with joy because I have overcome the world. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. So when we think about it, we already, um, we ask God for that peace. We have that perfect peace that God gives us through our trials because there's going to be something that comes up. I mean, we're not going to go through life um, drama free, tribulation, trial free. We're going to have that. But Jesus was saying that when it does come, knowing that you have the peace of God residing in you and you can make it through, there is hope. You know, there is hope to make it through those um, through those hard times. And he's saying, you're going to have the suffering. And he said that he thought he's already overcome the world. So I mean, we already have a victory through whatever um, situation, circumstance or trial that we are going through. Um, and so that's uh, and what you're saying, um, Verita, is totally scripture. I was thinking the same thing when you was um, talking about um, how Jesus says it's going to be things coming. And, and a lot of times. Um, people, I think they think because I accepted Christ, I'm not going to have any more issues. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, I accept Christ and y'all still going through. Of course. Yeah, we're still going to go through. We're still, But we're not going through alone. That's the thing about it. We don't go through alone. We go through with the help of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives us peace, who gives us hope, who gives us joy, who gives us it, love, everything that we need in this particular time as we continue to um, Press toward our mark, press toward our goal. And we don't want to quit being, um, quit seeking our purpose when something in life happens, a loss of a job, loss of a spouse, a child, 
um, uh, finances, whatever the case may be. We don't want to quit our purpose because God has a purpose. He has a, a, um, a goal for everybody that's here or we're here for a reason. If we don't know what we're here for, we need to continue to seek his face just because something happened. And sometimes we do become a little stagnant right there and we rest right there a little bit and we have every right to rest because something has happened and we need to deal with it and we need to process it and we need to learn how to manage it. And once we get to the place we can process it, we can deal with it, we can manage it, then continue to focus, ask God, hey, Lord, I need to get back focused on my goal because he still has work for us to do such as being on the line and such as sharing um, with other people what we're going through, how we manage it, what we're dealing with, um, how can they help? How can we be of a help to them? Because sometimes people can bless you just as much as you can bless them, bless them. You know, through, yeah. the, um, through it all. So, you know, with things that people say, oh, I enjoy it being on here. I enjoy it hearing y'all. That blesses us. And it lets us know that we're helping you and you're helping us as well. So um, all those things that we brought up tonight, um, knowing your purpose, focusing on that goal, and eventually you're going to reach it. It might feel like it at that particular time that you're not going to reach it because of what you're going through and the pain is so intense and it's so fresh and it's so heavy. But believe you me, through it all, God will begin to lift, that weight will begin to lift up off your shoulders where it's manageable and God will carry you on through to stay focused on the prize, stay focused on that goal because it's coming. I'm going to tell you, it's coming. We will obtain, we will achieve, will achieve. Amen. Amen. So we have to, as, as just piggybacking off of what Minister Corrine said, is like we, um, as a athletic person or an athlete who um, have goals and intention, as you have people that have goals to make it big, and when they decide that's what they want to do, they, they get in the gym, exercise, build their muscles up. So we, as we run the right race and run to, you know, in the way that God, the pace that God have allowed us to be able to run, he want us to stay consistent but we got to have an aim as a part of the scripture say, don't run aimlessly. So when something, when crisis happened to you, just don't take off running and do and think what the world, different thoughts going to come, but do not let the negative thoughts consume, consume right. you and stay there. But you have to refocus just as the athlete um, does. If they miss a beat, they have to refocus and they stay focused on the goal of their intention of, of what they desire to develop. And that's the same way, um, even going through the, uh, the grief process, mm -hmm. I, we, have, we have a decision to make. Are we going to lay down and cry in it and wallow in it? Are we going to find the strength through in God to get up and move and be able to continue life? Because it's not our time. Just because you lost a job, because you lost a loved one, because of a, of a bad relationship or a divorce, that does not mean it's a, the end for us. So it just really mean when those kind of distractions come, it just mean refocus, yes. write down what, what, what you want to do from here. And it, and, and one thing I know when I first started out in ministry, I ain't not have a clue what I was supposed to do. So uh, actually in reality, almost every department in the ministry, you have to you have to find your niche as God, and as you go and try different places, you know, like in, in your ministry, as I went through different ministries and I just worked. And when I went in and did, I did everything that I knew to do in a positive way to assist to make the, the um the the ministry function. And as I start going through um, helping in different uh, ministry, it helped define my purpose and who, who and what I'm supposed to be doing in ministry. But it took me to, it took me 
to start. I just couldn't go and sit on the pew and then expect and don't do nothing and then expect for God to say, well, um, hey, Sandra, I need you right there. I'm not saying that it won't do it, but sometimes we have to be willing to go and serve some way. And while you serving others, then you will define, you will get an understanding of God will reveal and define where your fit is. And I can remember a while back when Sister Verita, and I love that when she was speaking on, you know, when she lost her son, she could have sat down and wallowed in it, but she and her children, they took, um, when I forgot the name of the, um, you probably can tell the name of the, um, the the ministry that y'all came but y'all got something together to help other people and that was a blessing right. um sister verita and her family decided well we're gonna go out and assist and help other families instead of she could have sat home and just mope in it and most time when someone connected to us if that's how we start out Guess what? Your children, they're going to follow you. Because I, I, I noticed when my children watched me. And if, if they thought that I was down, it set the tone for them. So I had to learn to stay positive. Even in my grief, it hurt the pain. And I did share that. But when they see me and my pain and hurt, they didn't see their mother just set. They might have seen their mother, you know, kept moving. And because really I set the tone of how that how my children was gonna process through it. So, you know, we just have to find, you know, write our goals and keep it, you know, just move forward and not just move aimlessly. We gotta we got to have a, a plan to move forward. And I was going through, um, and I always talk about, I always say my greatest time, we, we go through a lot of grieving processes in life, but my greatest um, time of grief was when I lost my son. And as you were, uh, my son and my three grands, of course, at the same time. And when I was listening to you talk, um, <clears throat> I was thinking that a lot of times I would say, I would hear other people talk because they've been through something. I was like, oh, I wish I was there. Oh, I wish I could be there. I wish I could be there. But the thing about it, um, as you was talking and you were talking about how Sister Verita and her family, you know, went out and they started doing things for other people, how, you know, we get up um, sometimes in the church or how we serve other people, how we find our purpose. And the um, thing about it, everything. And I remember when I, I, um, the first time I heard about a process, I heard Bishop talk about baking the cake and I heard about him take a, mm -hmm. taking time to bake a cake. You don't just throw a cake in the oven and it's done. You put ingredients in there. And just like you were talking about the lemonade, how you put your sugar, how you put other ingredients and in, other things in your lemonade. Some people like it, some people don't, but everything you do is a process. You will get there, you know, because if you keep right. your focus in you on that goal and on that prize, um, and just like I was thinking, man, I would like to get there to that point where I could be able to really open up and talk to somebody about what's going on. I want to be at that point. I'm not at that point yet. Or I want to be over here where I don't cry anymore. I think I may have shared with you, but I cry so much. I want to stop crying so much. You know, there's so much we want to stop doing during the grieving period, but we have to allow ourselves time to um, heal um, so we can get to a point where we can manage and be able to do some of those things that uh, we talk about and that you really want to do and and serve in church you may see one person they lost their um person that they love or lost their job or something um six months ago somebody lost theirs 10 years ago the one six months may be up in a church serving and helping other people but the one 10 years ago may like i don't feel like doing that right now everybody has a process everybody are in different places but you'll get there, you know, you'll get to serve and you'll get to the place where you're not crying every day at the drop of a dime. You'll get to the place where you're able to open up and talk to other people. And I know I'll get there um, too. It's still, things are still a process for me as well. 
even though it's been six years, I think six years now since it happened. I try not to remember, try not to count, but even though it's been a while, you know, I still have some things that I have to go through. So it doesn't end when you're able to uh, manage it. You're always going to think about it. You're always going to have feelings. You're always going to, but you, it, things will be a lot more easy to manage. You'll get to that goal and get to that prize. But I think one of the things that you were talking about, Minister Sandra, is serving. Um, I heard a lot when you start serving others and then you'll find your purpose that, that God had um, for you. That's one of the ways that you can find your purpose, you know, continue to seek God. And once you stop putting the focus on self and put it on other people, I found that it was easier for me to manage because it's always about me. I'm always crying. I'm always, it's always, a, but what about other people that need me right now that something just happened? Open it up for somebody else to, hey, to, um, to somebody else to help them and to assist them. But again, everything is a process, but we'll get to that goal in, in our own time. Like I say, you reach there for I do, or I reach there for you do, but in our own time, everybody process is different, going um, through in different ways. And it takes some people time. Maybe a lot of time. So often we think we should shut the door to the past, but we yeah. need to bring the past along with us. Right. It's the health part on moving forward because there's a lot of things in the past that bring you joy still. And you can't just shut those things out. I right. know sometimes that everyone, everyone heal at their own pace, which is true. But I'm going to tell y'all from a medical point of view, if you go past eight years, y'all seek counseling. Anyone that's going past eight years, seek counseling because you need some help that you aren't getting. And you need be able to talk to someone to help pull that out of you. If you got a friend that you're talking to, that's great. But doctors said, if you go past eight years, then you need to seek professional help. And those things that, that came about in our past, that people are wanting to tell you, don't think about that anymore. Don't think about that anymore. I'm sorry, but we got to still think about it. Cause it make us who we are. Those things we did before with the loved ones, our own job, some of those things brought a lot of joy and happiness to us. So that's still part of our identity. We can't just close it down because that's what it was. It took me a while to realize that I knew from a very young age, uh, it bothered me now because I, I take everything so personal internally. I have a gift of mercy. <clears throat> and I just shut down one time when people came around me talking about this situation problem I don't want to hear that I got my own problems and and I found out that who I was I would stop being that person because I had that gift of mercy and empathy so I had to, I had to reevaluate me who I am and look at me what am I doing what am I not doing and once I started by doing what God had gifted me with it redefined who I was and I was able to move a little farther in that area of grief that we talk about all the time. We heard and we painted. But when you shut yourself down in the area that God has blessed you in to be that person, you really aren't yourself anymore. A lot of times we shut down in those areas because of grief, but we can't shut us down. We got to keep being who we are, keep walking, bring those broken pieces with us. So they can help man us back into a whole person. I, and like I always say, I don't want to be just mended. I want to be healed. Because when you're mended, you can't break again. So in the process, I want to be completely healed in my loss and my pain that I've been going through, I've experienced. And I thank God he's been doing that. So I can look back on things now that brought a lot of pain that I don't hurt as like I used to. I, I can deal with it better. And that part of me is bringing about another identity to who I am. Cause I'm short sometime now and to the point. My son always tell me, mama, you always hurt somebody, but I said, well, I'm just telling the truth, baby. But everybody can't deal with the truth right now. Mama, I said, ah, it's okay. I work on it. But I do know sometimes I'm very short and to the point and I try not to be that way, but that's part of my identity. And I cut it off at one time. I stopped being that way because of what I was going through, seeing others hurt and everything. But sometimes I'm not everybody ever tell one to stop grieving because that's wrong. Because they got to grieve. 
They got to walk through it. I'm going to tell them to cry as much as you want to cry. I even tell them to go outside and keep that dog. You got me feel like kicking that dog, but get it out of you. Reclaim your identity. Reclaim who you are. Be the person that God has called you to be. And that means walking through that pain and getting over it. And as everyone has said, it's not easy to do just that. It takes time. Yeah. But too much time and you find yourself becoming stagnant, not want to do anything at all, not want to live, go find yourself a counselor. It would just be your pastor. Talk to someone. Find some release in what you feel internally. Let it out. It's going to be for your good, your good. So you're talking about the eight years. I don't, um, can you, can you, if you don't mind, say a little bit more about the eight years that you're talking about when um, you were saying from your professional experience of something from the doctor. And I, and I find um, with me that if I don't, with me not talking about that particular thing, um, that particular incident or calling it what it is, I feel like with me, I'm able to manage and cope better, whereas somebody else, they can talk about it and spill it all out and they are good. So yeah. um, what about, and I feel like I'm, I'm on a goal and on a mission still for Christ. And I don't feel like I'm shut down as I was before, even though I still hadn't um, opened up and talked about it to this day. So what are, what are you talking about? The eight years seek um, help and counsel. My, my thing with you, you have not become stagnant either. You still moving and going. Right. That eight years because of Jesus, yeah. When they become stagnant in their life, they stop. They just okay. stop. They a complete standstill. They oh. not want, want to do anything. They don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to be around anybody. Their life is just really at an end. And when you become that stagnant and that depressed, you do need help. You do need help. And there's a, there's a timetable that counseling study has put together that gives you a period of time before it goes through certain things. But it's not always accurate because it may take somebody else more than just six weeks to acknowledge the laws. It may take somebody a year. Right. But when it comes to that emotional part of us, when we start becoming stagnant, they do put a very severe time on that eight years. They said the Kubla Claus study, if you go past that, they want you to seek help. So that's and basically... I'm sorry. So that's basically that's someone that hasn't moved from day one, basically. Yes. They, they still stagnant sitting and then not trying to move yes. forward. Yes, okay. ma'am. They're, still, they're yes. still holding on. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, I get that. And that was um that was me. Um, I'll say probably a couple of years ago, last year and up until um, up until last year, maybe a year before last, and I basically just started um, coming out of that um, and realizing what it was. And then being shut up in the house wasn't um, helping either. So <laughs> that was another thing that just shut me down too. I was like, oh my goodness, and here we go. But you know, I'm I'm learning to pull out and pull forward and move through, and learn to make those um, and, and make the. Um, identify and separate, you know, what's going on with each event that comes in my life, learning how to manage it better, learning that, nope, you can't go back to that dark place. Um, because when you sit there, you, you don't move, you, um, whatever has happened to you, lost a job, like we say, finances, spouse, children, um, whatever the case may be, um, a, a loss of promotion you thought you were going to get, um, and you didn't get it, you know, yeah. whatever the case may be, you can't sit right there. And you're talking about when you sit right there and you don't move forward and you let it affect you in a very negative way, whereas you can't function, you don't, which I didn't want to be around anybody, didn't want to go anywhere, don't talk to me, don't say nothing to me, don't look at me. You know, I was the all of the above, but I thank God, you know, for delivering me and still delivering me from it. And that's what you're talking about when you have the that, like, Gosh, I can't yeah. deal. Just don't come near me, type of yeah. thing. I see, what, and you stay there. I see yeah. you. Stay there. Because I will say, you know, what we're about, it says, you know, that grief it is a pressure, but it should bring us to um, a greater growth and maturity. Mm -hmm. So as we're learning how to, um, you know, like as, as openly as I can talk about my son now, I was not able to do that at year two. You know, we were doing things. I never missed church. 
So people just assumed it was fine. I couldn't share, couldn't, you know, try to help people. But the sharing actually empowered me. And what I realized in my sharing is that I was really being selfish because people were actually going through similar things. And because I wouldn't share, then they didn't share. But then the more I shared, the more I realized that people wanted to share too. They just didn't know where to, how to take me. And it was like, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to send out a, a, a message, send out a signal that I'm available for you, you be available for me, and then we're going to help each other. And so I think as, as I have matured, um, you know, I, my, you know, as my, um, relationship with their dad took a different turn and as you know we had to move forward now I'm, I'm you know soon to be an empty nester you know all of those are are changes and pressures that we're under and I think it's requiring a different level of faith that are a different level of maturity a different level of growth on my part so it is changing my identity it is changing who I am mm -hmm. um, all a part of my purpose, but just waiting for these events to mm -hmm. to happen. Um, yeah. And hopefully I'm going to respond according to God's plan, um, you know, to them. But it, 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 it does, grief requires a level of growth and maturity that yes. we don't even sometimes know we have. So, yes. You know, one it's of those things, like until it happens to you, I could take care of, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know that I could really do that. But now that it has happened, I'm capable. I, I had it in me the entire time. I just had it to, to tap into it. And like you said, sometimes it takes a year, two years, but it's there. And you just it's, have to okay. be with the one to we tap all, into it. I think sometimes we all keep saying, it. there's no easy answers. We just got to stop walking through it. And as part of the lesson been going through you know you know you live to, you're gonna win you're gonna win but if you don't do anything to win we're not going to win yes we hurt we hurt greatly when we lose someone and a, a loved one or someone just goes away move away even we pain but we just sit and waddle in it and not try to move forward we're just gonna hurt worse the pain just stay and just get deeper and stronger and stronger until we can't move at all. So it's, I like what you all are saying because we got to, we got to keep pushing. I had to keep pushing. And I admire you two ladies tremendously. Y'all lost kids. What, what came, part of you, in fact, what came out of your loins, you know, and it's, that's hard for a mother to put aside a child they have birth and keep pushing for it, but you ladies didn't give up. It was a struggle. It wasn't easy, but you, you kept going, you kept going. And now you say you find a new you. You find a new identity in yourself which you thought you did not have or did not even knew you had before. So, so you ladies are great. And I hope other ladies out there and guys that are listening to the broadcast. I'm feeling the same way and stepping up and moving in the same direction by just trying something new. We don't have all the answers for you. In fact, we don't have any answers for you. We just wishing and ask that you try. Try to move out of the place you are. And no better way to do that than what we keep saying is the word of God. When everything else around you fail, God's word never fail. There's everything you're going through, there's a scripture reference for it. So you just need to find what you need in the word of God to give you strength to move on to your next place in this world, your next identity. And we all will be okay. We, we're all going to be what God has intended for us to be. And that's marvelous creatures. Yeah. And boldly in his truth. God's good. And I just also like to share, you know, um, as we was learning about um, the topic when we was talking about run, run to win and know that uh, athletes have to work hard and they constantly, 
you know, working hard in spite of what it feel like. Their body went, you know, goes through all kind of different changes because now you're trying to train your body to be able to accomplish that what what you set out to do. And that's the same thing even with um um with with grief. It's not just because you we say um we on here to win, we we moving forward. We understand it is a process. You ain't going to feel like it. It's going to hurt. You may cry. Because even through when I knew I had to run, but I knew from the beginning, I, I knew I didn't want to go to that dark place that I have been to before. But I had to, I had to fight daily to keep from going into depression. Some yeah. days it didn't seem like I had the upper hand on. It seemed like depression was going to come and overtake me. And, but I was determined, even though my, my natural side was trying to dictate to me, you know, depression, I was determined. No, As I like, I fought. I, I did. And when I'm saying I fought, it was times I just had to pray it was time i just cried i it was just time i just had to find a way of releasing and no it's not gonna come easily we're not gonna tell sit we can't tell you everything that we sharing with you tonight that it's gonna happen for you tomorrow but what we can tell you if you stay persistent as the runner um, run to hit the front, the finish line, you will be able one day to hit the finish line. But you may not, you may not see it from the, from the natural po um, point until, you know, later on you'll start seeing progress because I mean, I'm just thankful for God um, that this um, matter of fact may uh, be four years four years for me but I can truly say even doing the these segment and helping others it had helped me tremendously um the, the times and now it's like it, it 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 I know I know I knew that I've been in those places but it almost seemed like I didn't because it's like God carried me through especially those days when I just didn't think I was going to make it. But I knew within myself, I had to make it. So it's, it's, it's going to be okay. And God will be with you if you allow him to be. He, he's standing at the door waiting for you if you hadn't let him in to assist you through through it. And even it tough, you know, when you go through and look at Job, when you look at Naomi, they they went through all of the natural changes like each individual here tonight went through. It just made we just had made it had different experience, but they had they went through the physical um um struggles like we do in this day and time. Um, with the hurt, the pain, but they they stayed persistent. They stayed, they they trusted God through it, and God brought them through to the other side. And and uh, and you know our adversity that we we have to face. To me, it's like once you go through it, it's just God just bringing you through to the other side, or where He have a promotion and. And our blessings is on the other side of it. So we encourage y'all who are listening to us tonight, um, don't give up. Keep trusting God through the, you know, through the hurt and pain. You're going to get through it. You may feel it, but you will get through it. And God will carry you through it. So we encourage you all to, to continue to um, make plans and 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 do things that's gonna add to your life and and um and help you to enjoy and connect to some people that you know can 
help you to the other side. And if you don't have no one, you have four, you're looking at four ladies on, on here this evening that you can reach out to. And I guarantee you, we would do the best of our ability to, to lead and assist you in the, in the right positive way that we know how in Christ Jesus. Amen. We, we can be a listening ear to you and try to help you, but you got to be willing to be open, open for what God has for you. And we also like to take the time out tonight. We have came to the ending of this segment and we like to take the time to invite you to come out and fellowship with us at Crown Kingdom Cultural Center. And we also want to acknowledge our, our bishop and our first lady, um, Finest and Denise Bush, um, for we are thankful um, for them being our spiritual head. And we so we like to welcome you um, to fellowship with us 10 o'clock on Sundays. We do have in-house service. Um, we do practice social distancing. Um, we do wear masks. Um, we also have Bible study on Wednesdays night, live and on virtual as well at 7.30 p.m. And if you cannot make it in-house service on Sundays, you are welcome to um, log on to um, Crown Kingdom Cultural Center on Facebook or either on YouTube. And we just want to say God bless you this evening and thank you for being with us. And hopefully um, you were able to, care, um, to carry something um, with you tonight that touch you and that will, will assist you through um, your grief and your loss. God bless y'all and we'll see y'all the next Thursday, the um, next um, what Thursday is this? This the second Thursday? Yeah. So we are see you the fourth Thursday. Yes. The, the months are going so fast. I, I'm really, um, it's going so fast. I can't hardly keep up with the months, but we will be back on the fourth Thursday at 7 p.m. And we're looking forward to seeing you all. God bless and good night. Good night. <laughs>